Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Ask Amity Show. My name is Edmund. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Cindy. And we are the attorneys here at Amity Law Group. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, transfer on deaths. One of you asked us the question, is a transfer on death deed better than a living trust? So today we're going to go through uh, you know, both transfer on death deed and a living trust to, to help you decide which one's better for you. So Jennifer, can you start off, us off with... Uh, explaining you know what is a transfer on death deed sure so a transfer on death deed essentially is putting a beneficiary's name on your deed ahead of time so that if something were to happen to you and you pass away then uh, based on the deed it'll already designate who's going to be the beneficiary of that specific property um, and uh, so the question is whether or not that is sufficient enough uh, for you to pass on your assets and whether or not uh, you should actually do a living trust instead. So maybe Cindy can kind of go through what a living trust uh, would be and kind of what uh, how more beneficial it is uh, than a transfer on death deed. So um, it's quite a big difference between the transfer on death deed and the living trust. Um, and uh, there's a lot of differences, but we can't cover all of those in, in our short video here today. But I think we can highlight some of the key points. So first of all, the um, transfer on death deed is pretty limited. It um, does not allow for contingent beneficiaries. So earlier Jennifer said that, you know, basically you're putting somebody on your deed uh, before anything happens, but it's, it's one person or maybe it's a, a couple of people. But if anything would have happened to those people um, before your passing, then uh, your estate could potentially face probate, which is something that I'm sure you had intended to avoid when you recorded that transfer on death deed. So um, it, you know, that, that could be a, basically a, you know, a huge issue for anyone who's trying to leave their assets to their heirs, but um, can only name, you know, that one person at the time on their transfer and death deed. So Jennifer, why don't you tell us some other <laughs> points? Um, I think uh, the key point is that it's just really not flexible. Um, you name one individual or a couple individuals as beneficiaries. If something happens to them, then you know um, it still might go through probate. And also, it's just not very flexible. So let's say certain situations or conditions occur where um, those beneficiaries are facing some sort of debt. So if you are inheriting um, that property, then their creditors would be able to go after that property and there's really nothing that can prevent um, these beneficiaries from avoiding this creditor from and taking this uh, potentially taking this property uh, whereas a living trust you know you can uh, kind of customize it and have certain scenarios in there where if a certain condition occurs they have creditors against them then the trustee can hold on to that property and maybe potentially not even distribute that property outright uh, at least not until the debt is settled um, so that also helps with uh, the situations of the beneficiaries and certain situations where uh, maybe they're facing uh, some debt. And it also works the same way for um, beneficiaries who are minors. So they may not have any creditors yet, but they um, can't actually take on certain assets like for real property or even cash that you know minors can't exactly manage just quite yet on their own so trustees can hold on to those assets in a living trust and manage those assets on behalf of the minors Cindy so it sounds to me that if you want to leave your property like your home to to your children who's under 18 does that mean that you can't use a transfer on debt deed to, to have them inherit that home uh, I mean, people still do it. You absolutely can still put a name that is a minor on the transfer on death deed, but the results of which uh, where they can't actually take on that property because they're under 18 may not be something that you uh, had, had thought of or intended to happen. Yeah, so I think if they were under 18 at the time of you passing, then potentially, you know, whoever their guardian would be at that time would need to hold on to that property for them. And again, if you didn't do um, any further estate planning to name a guardian for them, it might be a court appointed guardian and you would still have to go through probate as well. Yeah, and one of the other big limitations of a transfer on death deed is it doesn't dictate what happens to your home if you become disabled. 
So at any point, for example, if you develop Alzheimer's or you're in a coma, the transfer on death deed doesn't give uh, someone close to you the power to manage that home for you. So if you were to need to sell the home to, to pay for your medical bills, or if you wanted to transfer your home to another family member, no one else could do it, um, which means that your loved ones would have to go to uh, conservatorship court to get a conservatorship um, for you and to act on your behalf. So um, I think conservatorships are, uh, it, it takes months to, to do, and also it can cost out thousands of dollars, especially if you hire an attorney to help you. And so that's another limitation. Um, but with a living trust, you can uh, dictate you know, who can manage your assets for you, your home, your money, in the event that you become uh, disabled. So that's one of the other benefits of a living trust. So I think in short, uh, basically the transfer on death is um, it's useful, whereas uh, if you're only transferring the certain property and you're not planning for kind of these unexpected situations, uh, but you know, from our standpoint, we've seen clients come and go with a lot of different scenarios, different family dynamics, um, different health health situations, and uh, minor children. And so, uh, we would advise you to maybe further look into whether or not a transfer on death deed is sufficient. Um, and in certain situations, it, it might be, but uh, maybe not. And so, you would really take a uh, care to look through kind of your um, options and see whether or not perhaps a living trust is a lot more kind of um, comprehensive and may help you uh, plan a little bit more further ahead. Yeah, I think generally a transfer on death deed will probably um, be helpful to a very small fraction of the population because um, there are you know, the, the, the fact that you can be flexible with your trust it, it just simply applies to the majority of the population. All right, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to learn more about transfer on death deeds, we do have a very detailed article that we wrote uh, on, on the pros and cons of it. We're going to link it um, to the video below. And so if you have any other questions, you can read the article or you can call us for a free consultation or leave a comment below if you have any other questions. That's it for now. Uh, we'll see you in our next video.